Hello everyone, welcome back. I'm not sure how that intro worked. Something odd happened on this end, but I think I might have slipped through. I think it happened after I shut the computer or uh, paused that. The intro, if so, I, I continue to apologize for my skills here, but uh, let's work on improving them. So let's just get started. Let's get me off of here and go to tiny now what are we looking at here oh okay everyone well almost a lot of you have seen this movie the big lebowski where someone looks like a child who wanders into the middle of a movie well this this video is going to be like that if you don't know the story so far eh, this this stuff might not make a lot of sense this is not a standalone video this is a continuing soap opera of events hopefully we'll add to it here uh, you know something positive you're gonna learn from this uh, if you're here for the technical stuff which probably you are because I'm not that entertaining uh, <clears throat> you're gonna this is gonna be uh, some good there's some good red meat in here skip ahead if you must I won't be insulted but I'm gonna lead up the little story of how some things fell together and why uh, we're focusing today on these Two scientific papers, uh, one video uh, by my friend Wayne Ojala, who uh, did an experiment uh, regarding those papers, and some other miscellaneous stuff. You just wandered into the movie, believe me, and I can't un I can't unwind all that. If you want to hear, you know, want the whole backstory, uh, here's 25 videos leading to today. It's also on YouTube. That's Rumble, that's YouTube. Okay, enough plugs. Oh, but before we start, before we even get to the thumbnail, before we get to the overview, we're going to do our opening benediction and words to live by. From my uh, contacts and so on, uh, I, I think although there will be enough information coming out to finally lay to rest that this is not a tinfoil hat subject and there's a reality to it and uh, <clears throat> the government is making a concerted effort to to uh, learn more about it um, <clears throat> i think any truly deep state increase knowledge is likely not to come out. I don't see all the barriers falling. Understand. Understand, understood. Amen. Over and out. Know it. Live it. No. Learn it. Learn it. Know it. Live it. All right. Enough clowning around. Oh, let's get on with it, shall we? Okay, but that's good to um, you know. Let's 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 frame everything here. All right, today is a mishmash of a bunch of stuff, as reflected on this thumbnail. That's pretty busy for me, but uh, somehow it looks all right. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, let the audience judge that. So, looking at our script here. Uh, yeah, this is a video about videos, about tweets, about videos, about one, one guy said about the other one, about the other one, about the other one, and then how they responded. So, uh, yeah, let's get, let's get right into it. Uh, so we go tab by tab. And this is how we get started. All right, this, we're going to start here with our guy, Jesse Michaels. Most of you know, uh, watching this, see, we have to get right into the wa walking into a movie. You know who he is. He's a Silicon Valley guy, well-connected. He also happened to know the UFO whistleblower just by coincidence. How many people just happen to know Peter Thiel, half of Silicon Valley, and uh, uh, David Grush, UFO whistleblower, testified before Congress under oath, et cetera, and so forth, and, uh, you know, Anyway, you have to know who he is. You have to. 
Look him up. There's his name spelled out for you. Then, um, yeah, so it started with him, and it moved, then it rolled over into MH370. You all know what that is. We'll get into it. It rolled, that rolls into Weinstein, rolling into that, rolling back into this. Oh, yeah, did I tell you these two work for the same company? You know, it's a, it's just such a small world here. And then, what are, what are they talking about? They're talking about, Jesse said, you know, I want to make a, I want to see a video. He offered, uh, you know, a bounty for a video proving the Bifeld Brown effect. So that, that rolls over into my area of UFO, quote, propulsion, air quotes, ironic quotes, you know, roll the uh, sci-fi music, uh, X-Fi, you know. Uh, but that's what this is about here. So uh, that catches my attention, wouldn't it? Of course it does. Because I know a bunch of guys, like all the guys at APEC, they, they're all into that, I'm into it, uh, I'll get into my views on it in a moment and uh, why we're talking about this. So he starts the ball rolling on this video. I innocently turn on Twitter and I see this stuff. And I saw it in reverse alphabetical order too. I saw it from the MH370 uh, guy, Ashton Forbes. You all know him. Uh, his tweet was first. In this yeah here it is see it's all in and, in and out of order uh, we can get moved beyond here or beyond that we mentioned by fell Brown we'll get into that in a little bit more detail in a moment uh, do we want to all right so Ashton Forbes writes a tweet Jesse is one of my favorite podcasters, etc. and so forth. He links him up. So I have to read the Jesse tweet. And I look at his short video, which leads to a long video. He just did a, a long a, a video about the history of UFO studies and research and the science angle. And uh, he had to be there. So I look at that. They're, vo they're both great. I watch them right away. I usually don't do that, but this is important. And so I feel, you know, of course I have to chime in out of logical order to Ashton Forbes, because he's the first one I saw. And the thing, uh, Thompson, oh, he misspelled it wrong. Thomas, oh gosh, forgive me, sir. Rest in peace. Thomas Townsend Brown. Uh, he had a theory of electro <clears throat> electromagnetism interacting with gravity. Basically, uh, you know, electricity and, and or magnetism. Now, that's very popular. That's been around forever. Townsend Brown was born in 1905, and we're still talking about this stuff. His first patent was in 28, and they ran up until 68. And uh, this is what Jesse, I'm getting on a roll here, folks, of knowing what I'm talking about. Uh, he wants to see a video of that. He's offering a bounty. It's like, wow, I'm just learning about this. I'm a history guy. I'm not a science guy, but I'm very interested. I want to know it all. If any of you, anyone out there can show me this, I'll pay you 50 to 100 grand, I think he said it was. I don't, you know. Maybe up to 150. I don't know what. Somewhere in a nice range where, you know, if people could do it, do it. But the thing is, this is where my brain explodes and this is where I have to get on here. First thing you think is like, if it hasn't happened by now, it's not going to happen. Second thing is like, well, it's hidden. Or third thing is, whoever has can do this doesn't need the money. You know, that's just my gut reaction here. And the fourth and most important gut reaction is like, wait a minute, pal, you're, you know, God bless you, but you're going to get caught up at some point and you're going to find out what's happening now because history is happening now. That's the point of this video. This is my angle. But to come back to where I was so I don't lose track of the flow, <laughs> as it were, 
And I'm saying, Ele Jesse, Ashton, electromagnetism in the form of light, which is different than electricity and magnetism, but it's got the same similar name because they all act the same. Because what is, what is an electron, folks? Check my other videos, please. It's a photon wrapped around another photon. You get an electron. Two 720s make a 140, uh, 1440, whatever. And uh, so they're going to act the same. It's just light wrapped around itself becomes an electron, which also throws off a magnetic field. If you're looking at it this way or this way, you know. It's a long story and it's a lot of complexity, but it's easy. You know, in the, in the end, it, it's kind of easy. So I'm saying, oh my gosh. Electromagnetism in the form of light, capital, uh, parentheses, uh, italics, uh, mitigates gravity right in front of our eyes. I got 25 videos on it, folks. Look at a balloon. Look at a cloud in the sky, which was water on the ground this morning. Why is that? Why is that one watt water molecule? Don't give me density. Done with hearing anything. Don't even think it anymore. Why is that water molecule that was on the ground now up in the sky? Because it was energized by light. The sun came up, the heat and the light, whatever, okay? That's what mitigates gravity. You can run as many volts, kilovolts, Tesla magnet uh, units as you want. It's only going to get so far. It's not your fault. It's a good notion. But a similar notion is this. And it's overlooked or not unknown. Some of this. Wait till you see what's coming up. So I tell them, hey man, spend the fifty to a hundred thousand dollars on Dollar Tree balloons, and you'll be closer to UAP propulsion than any of Bob Lazar. Now he he, he got into it too, Bob Lazar, because he had to be mentioned because he's known by Jesse, I suppose. And Je well, Jesse asked a fair, a very good question. I'm glad he's doing this. Believe me, I am not putting anybody down here in any way, or criticizing, or suggesting what they do. I just hope they see this. And think for themselves and see it my way of course but you, you know whatever so Bob Lazar gets mentioned in there and he's gonna get mentioned in here by me because well <clears throat> something which is not by Phil Brown does could be mistaken for gravity generation be, even though it's light caused by light. And we're going to get into the scientific paper here, describing it in detail and why. Why it would look like gravity generation. Why would it seem, oh, it, it's getting heavier. We turn, we flip the switch. It's getting heavier. It must be generating gravity. Hmm. I would have said mitigating. I still say it. But now I'm saying controlling, because it actually does seem heavier when it's measured. <laughs> but there's a re But the light has to be going under the thing. If it's over, it's going to seem lighter. Proven right here on these papers, shown uh, on in a manner of. Sh well, you see for it yourself. It speaks for itself. Shown on um, Wayne's video, which we will look at. Let me just check something here. Yes, okay, I'm fine. Got to make sure I'm tiny in the screen. So, I mean, sometimes I forget to switch back and you don't want that. You want it the way it is. So you don't have to look at me so much as you're looking at the substance. So, okay. So I go to Jesse's tweet from Ashton's. Repeat what I just said about electromagnetism in the form of light. It's so close. These guys are so close. <laughs> and they'll get there. Um, and then I, I send them a video saying, here, look at this. Look at this. This explains it. And it has been getting us some views. Thank you, whoever's looking at it. And then I tell him, because what that is, and it's linked below, and if, you'll find it if you're interested. It tells the story from the 30,000 feet foot overview of what's going on 
what these flying saucers, I never saw one, supposedly might be doing, are doing, and even if they're not, it'll still work, okay? That's the point, and it should be uh, in development. And his buddies in Silicon Valley, well, you know, here I am, okay? You want it to be you or someone else. So, the next tweet is, Jesse, because I'm thinking this right away, because I've been meaning to do a video on Wayne's video. And he's a better video maker than me, by the way. He's not quite in Jesse territory, but I think Jesse would even appreciate his skills, you know? Editing and captioning. It's good. Anyway, I say the killer viral video will likely be by this guy. Because if someone does a, Vi a Bifeld Brown video, like he's asking, uh, that'll go viral, okay? And uh, Jesse Michaels is good at getting views, and he knows what that means. So does everybody else. And, and in my uh, diatribes, I have said that that's all the world needs is to see something that'll shock him into understanding what the hell this is and what it can be and what it could be and etc. And this is another step here. Wayne's video linked right there, which we will look at four of 12 minutes, will tell you, uh, you know, will show you because people want to see things with their eyes. Then we're going to go to the two papers involved that inspired that video. And those are right here, linked right here and linked below. So we will get to those. And, uh, okay, this is another extraneous tweet I put here for some reason. The same thing twice. Let's check the notes, shall we? So that made me think of Wayne. Okay, now I think we're the, what we're going to do now is take a look at Wayne's video. Yes, here we are looking at Wayne's video. Link below. Fail forward research. I'm going to put on my headphones, and I'm going to turn on the video. We'll listen to the first two minutes and the last two minutes, because you don't want to watch 12 whole minutes here. And he's good at giving an intro and an outro, but all the good stuff. Well, he's an experimentalist, right? You know, he's in the garage. I, well, I don't know if it's a garage technically, but it's... It's not a laboratory. He's a homemade tinfoil hat. Replicating and I think changing slightly some of these experiments done by some of these scientists who are guys that, uh, you know, Weinstein is saying, well, there's not enough heavyweights in here, etc. and so forth. Let's look at the 18th dimension. Hey, pal, you don't need that. You need to go help these guys with math. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you, I'll lay it out for you, pal. Uh, I'm sorry, not pal, a doctor. Anyway, let's, let's get started here. So I wanted to make this video, which I think is long overdue, exploring or demonstrating the connection between light and gravity. There is this well-accepted idea that supposedly gravity uh, bends light or modifies light, the path of light. And I talked about this in, a, in my previous video about the refractive index of space. But it raises a question uh, like, can light modify gravity? If it's intense enough, if it's directed at a target, energy density of um, a beam of photons create a gravity field or a modified gravity field. I don't like the term gravity anymore because I think it, it, it denotes something that doesn't really exist. Uh, in and of itself, I think it's more a an effect of modified, well, the modified refractive index or modified space time. So the experiments in this video are an attempt to explore that relationship um, between the presence of intense light and uh, how that may affect local gravity. According to the Cavendish experiment. Um, which is uh, well known, which is a fundamental, uh, foundational experiment that was done to prove or demonstrate the gravitational constant G uh, by having a horizontal balance. 
set up where there's a couple of masses that interact with each other and due to their gravitational attraction uh, it causes the balance, the horizontal balance to turn um, horizontally and so a force is observed, an attractive force between the two masses and in the case of the classic Cavendish experiment that was lead spheres uh, one would be a stationary sphere uh, one would be a smaller sphere mounted on the end of a balance beam. All right, we'll pause him. Now, two things there. I'm not sure if he has graviton. He's not as sold on graviton as I am. The guy who wrote the paper, at least one of them, he's pretty sold. I talk to uh, Wayne occasionally, and uh, he's semi. He semi is. He thinks it's all, you know, he's just, that's not his point. He wants to show that something's happening, uh, no matter what it is. Because, you know, hey, I'll even venture that it might not be the Graviton. It might be some of the stuff he put up. He flashed up there. I'm not sure if Graviton was on there. I don't know. I don't care right now. Um, so, and also, I would like to note, well, I mean, come on. The Cavendish experiment, this is not tinfoil hat stuff. All right, let's go. Let's go to the last two minutes. What the guy, what, what happens is they take the Cavendish experiment and add light to the equation, as it were. Okay, now you can watch that and see what happens. I'm just basically giving you the uh, conclusions. Because yesterday's thing ran almost two hours, and I don't know how how much uh, um, that we need to go on that long. Let's 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 hear him again. After last month's massive solar flare added a twenty fifth hour oh, to the day, commercial. are wondering what should we do with phenomenon remains for quite some time after the light turns off. So the bulbs. The, uh, the plastic housing of the bulb, the, um, the electronics remain hot for quite some time after. And so does the attractive force. It seems to remain for quite a while after. And you can see on the thermal camera, on the thermal images, the, um, the warm spots where the bulbs are. So as the temperature gets down again to like around 20 degrees, so closer to, to room temperature, um, this attractive force diminishes and then the balance goes back to its baseline. So in conclusion here it, uh, it appears to me that there is definitely an interaction between light intensity and gravitational force and in this case because it's a horizontal effect it would suggest to me that the, the gravity of the uh, balance plates or the tiles is actually being well maybe I won't use the word gravity but um, I might say gravito inertial mass of the plates so the it is being or the inertia of the plates is being uh, disrupted or imbalanced so it tends to want to move in that direction towards the source and it appears that heating is not a cause like heating air and causing air movement is not not the cause of this effect but i try to keep this in mind as i as i do these experiments and to eliminate that possibility as much as i can because it can be a source of error anyways i hope you like this uh comments are welcome i'll probably be doing more work with this these types of experiments and different arrangements uh so welcome ideas until next time thank you two things there uh, first off the heating before anyone gets excited about it yes he uh, excused it away in the end but if you dig into the um, the scientific papers it'll show you why it's easily dismissed there is not enough air in there that you could heat to I, I'm exaggerating a little bit here any temperature which is going to act make it act 80 times 
there's an 80x difference between what it could be at its worst and what it actually is. So that's, yeah, it's an error. It, it could be an error from the air moving. That is an error. But the thing is, there's not enough air in there. You know, it's like saying, okay, you know, how much wind would it take to move these 15 pound barbell, dumbbell things just stick on the end? You know, what, the hurricane force? I, you know, do the math yourself. It's written down in the paper and it's, it's, in the end, it's not an issue. The second thing he said was the gravito inertial, which is consistent with the graviton, which would explain both uh, properties of nature. And uh, now what do we do? We keep going. Uh, click to his, or uh, go look at his channel. Subscribe to his channel. He has other stuff there similar to that. Also looks at other things. He's, he's messed around with the uh, Bifeld Brown stuff, too. So, he's familiar with a lot of this stuff. He took a trip out to APEC, and uh, he's pretty serious about this. Look at his stuff. This is what he does. All experiments. So, now we're going to move on to the scientific papers. I'm going to take a break here. You won't notice it. But I will be right back. All right. I am back after a short break. Had to turn the lights on here because I'm going to be reading from these papers. And frankly, it got dark. It's raining today. Got too dark to uh, read without the lights. So let's get me off of here. Let's make me tiny again. And this paper big because it is big. And this first one, yeah, this is by Lewis Rancourt and Philip J. Tattersall, a Canadian and an Australian. This is called Further Experiments Demonstrating the Effect of Light on Gravitation, which is basically what Wayne just showed you. Uh, he, he may have, you know, I don't, I don't know if he copied them exactly, but that's between those guys, everyone there. Um, he... Uh, Oh, a note on this. Yes, I have heard of these guys. And I think the other one, I'm not sure about this uh, second paper. Yeah, I've heard of I heard of him before. Uh, before Wayne's experiment. But I kind of put them out of my mind. I mean, they weren't, they weren't on the front of uh, the front burner. Although, they were in, my, yeah, here, I want to mention my friend on Twitter. From Nebraska, Lincoln, Nebraska. I think he was a, astrophysics major, and he turned me on to Lewis Rancourt uh, again. I believe I had seen him, but he put him in my head and uh, put a notion in my head that stayed and stuck. And I, and I think it's, uh, well, we're going to discuss it in a minute. That is the push of gravity. Now everyone says, yes, it's pulling. It's pulling me toward the center of the earth. Some people, the minority view, say, no, it's, it's everything else outward pushing in. Try to think about that when you're on rollerblades and not get dizzy. Anyway, today, I'm going to say it's both. I, I'm sure uh, other people have said it, and maybe even I've said it before, but it gets pretty clear. What with Wayne's experiments and what's going to be described in this paper link below and I'm only summarizing here okay this is like 11 pages of experimental stuff and all that we're not doing that here today uh, we are doing bottom line stuff here because that's what you want and that's what I want well, let's see if we can hold this so the light that's there is usable Oh, how can we do this? Okay. In the abstract, I'm going to say blah, 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 and da, 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 and all this because it's, there's a lot to it. 
uh, freely movable mass caused the mass to move toward the light. They used the same horizontal torsion pendulum apparatus based on the Cavendish apparatus, which was used to measure the effect of light in freely moving masses. It was hypothesized that the light has a screening effect on a gravitational force, <clears throat> which I would call mitigation, whatever he calls it, screening. You know, Canadians, whatever, Australians, talk funny. And um, in view of these findings, the present authors designed a series of experiments using a specifically designed light system to further test the effect of lights on gravitation. And we will bottom line it for you here in a moment. Uh, this paper describes a series of experiments, blah, blah, blah. I'm just reading the few things I uh, underlined here. Uh, it'll, you know, here's an introduction, words upon words. What I've underlined is uh, what he says is fields made of what? Meaning the gravitational field. What is it? Same thing Wayne was just saying. Same thing I was just talking about. What is it? That's still hanging out there. We could use some help in the math there. In the physics uh, there, Weinstein. If you're not busy. I mean, if you really want that Nobel Prize, okay? Uh, force carriers are bosons. A boson for gravity, a.k.a. the graviton. Which, it, I don't know if I'm the only one that's is saying it also affects inertia. But we'll get to that in a moment. They don't say it right here, but Wayne just said it on that uh, video. Because that's what the torsion thing is. It's going this way in space, parallel, or, you know, not up and down. How about that? Not up and down. So you only get the latest high-tech uh, stuff here. It's not going... It's even going to get dumber in a moment. Watch. Dumber than not up and down, okay? The graviton, yeah, etc. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, now here's a bunch of pages with graphs and the pictures of their devices and charts. Stuff like that. With results. Okay, it's all technical stuff. You don't, you know, you can see it yourself. It's in a peer-reviewed journal of uh, Applied Physics, Volume 7, etc., uh, and, um, yeah, when you say fields made of what? Now, this, my channel is full of a lot of blather about anti-gravity moving masses up and down, okay? Or left and right. The flying saucers, the potential flying cars, whatever, whatever I'm yabbering about that day. Uh, what these people are kind of looking into, I would say exclusively, is just the field effect. And they call you hear this field propulsion and field effect. In other words, if I'm a mass and I'm losing more mass than I need to to float, okay, that's old news around here now, folks. Okay, old news. If you don't know it, you don't know it. You were getting caught up. That's good. And you put a slight, uh, you know, <clears throat> you put a bubble around it to, to reduce the drag friction and inertial mass. In other words, if you're so light, and you don't have any friction, you're going to ping around like a tic-tac does. You're going to go almost, almost the speed of light. You're going to go up and down at will, left, right, left, shoot off, whatever. You know, that's kind of a given. Oh, to me, it is now, for sure. And it's sinking in, I hope, to some of you. But these people, but what about the effect on the outside world? What if I blow my bubble up so big that it's affecting other things around me, including, quote, unquote, gravity. Some of you might still call it space-time. I don't like that, but I'll allow it so you don't log off yet. Uh, gravitons, something. Uh, you know, ether, there's a whole, there's, there's uh, a lot of different theories. Anyway, <clears throat> so what's going on with it? And, why, and how, how would light, more light, than needed to float something and move it around like a UFO and go to speed of light. What's it doing to the outside world? And, um, you know, I would call it mitigation. 
I think a better word might be controlling because I've been saying mitigation like, oh, it just disrupts everything, just disrupts it, which uh, it does. But when you start fine-tuning it and you start moving on a little bit, the word control kind of comes in a little, a little bit uh, with more concision. If that, that, made, that sentence made no grammatical sense, but there's no transcript here. It's a stupid video, so that's fine. Uh, uh, where are we? We're getting to the, to the goofy part that's kind of funny. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, where is it? Well, I, I know what it is off the top of my head, but let's just read their words. Yeah. Okay, bottom line it for me, Kelly. Page 11 of that paper. After many hours of observation and measurement, we believe that light does affect gravity. Okay, good. Now, here's where it gets counterintuitive. I like that. When I went back and reread this, this stopped me in my tracks, and I don't get stopped in my tracks on this. I fancy myself to know a bit about it. Uh, but I did, uh, and I knew this was going to be a, well, it's the next step. It's the, it's, once you get it through their head about what's going on and how to do the basics, well, then how do you control it? Because there's going to be flying saucers cr crashing into the surface of the moon left and right. If you don't, uh, you know, think it through a little bit. And this is where, uh, uh, I guess I could say bake your noodle without being too derivative of that certain movie. Because I never heard anyone say that before, that movie. But it kind of does here. Here's what they find. Significance of findings. This is underlined with a question mark. And it took me a day to figure it out. A light, quote, light moving horizontally under a mass causes an increase in weight. Huh? Whereas light, a light source above a mass, decreases its weight. Wow, counterintuitive. I thought we were supposed to be, I thought, huh? So let me demonstrate. I hope I'm on the camera correctly. Let's make sure we're centered here. Because I thought of this stupid demonstration this morning. It might be funny. Okay, so light goes under me. This is what they found. This is scientific finding. Suddenly my head gets heavier. Literally. It falls down. But if light comes over me. Over me. It gets lighter. Uh... What does that mean? Well, if my head's the thing controlling where the light's coming around because I sucked it in this way and I'm blowing it out this way, suddenly I'm a flying saucer head or something. And uh, But anyway, that's interesting, isn't it? They found this, you know, you can question the findings yourself. Um... They set up the experiment. Wayne showed it going horizontally. I mean, he threw the inertia word in there on it. And, uh, well, that's what they found. Okay? And that's the part there, I should mention it now before I forget it, where um, if you know the story of Lazar, Donnie, he walked into the middle of a movie... He's saying if his emitter, below, you know, is pushing something out, he calls it emitting gravity. Well, if it was emitting light, it's going to make my head go heavy. Don't take my word for it. And other people have done this too, I think, besides him, like the next guy. So that would appear to be generating gravity, wouldn't it? Light comes across here, my head gets heavy. Somebody generated gravity. Uh, you know, that's a reasonable explanation, isn't it? Okay, I don't think my head needs to be this big anymore, does it? Um, but isn't that interesting? 
So here you have, we know you, we know you can float and go left and right, okay? Just without bothering too much of the outside field. But in addition to that, you want to control the field. So you can see how if you're going to have this, this control while you're able to float and you have no friction this way or inertia, that's going to come in pretty handy. All right, that, so much for that rant. <clears throat> um, let's, but we have to check the, this is where I start forgetting things. So let's quickly check the agenda before we move on to that second paper. Oh, to re, uh, recap, we have the push, pull, above and below. Oh, oh, okay. Now we get to the really, it's going to get a little goofy again, folks, before we get back, back on to that uh, serious paper. But it might help you, because goofy can help people visualize. It helps me. Um, yes, uh, we mentioned the air was accounted for. It was also accounted for in this experiment with Rancourt. That's where the figure of 80x comes in. Saying, yeah, the air might have moved. It might have been heated. It might have been this. Might, might, might. But it sure as hell wasn't uh, to the extent that it's going to move around these heavy bowling balls. I think he used some sort of bocce ball or something. I don't know. Of iron or whatever it was. It's not going to do that. You ever see wind blowing bowling balls around? Nah, I don't think so. So, uh, so we can write that off. Um, so, of course, it'll work in a vacuum. Uh, so, because even in a vacuum, there's still a little gravity, isn't there? Everywhere you go in space, you're going to find a one, just one, plank-sized, well, it's two planks stuck together, graviton, that's slightly out of whack, or they're in whack. Anyway, they permeate the universe tacked on top of the vacuum. But that's just my opinion right there. But anyway, I don't think they found anywhere in the universe where there is no gravity. It just get weak, gets weak. So that has something to do with something. So let's go over here and start following our tabs again, which will follow a logical order of what the heck am I trying to say here? Oh, okay, this is just a little eye cleanser of a light pumping uh, tic tac flying saucer thing. That shape is supposed to look like a photon. A thing like that, if you're controlling that, then you're controlling up, down, left, right, etc., and so forth. But you have to really be controlling it. And what that means is, you know, every other angstrom, or every angstrom, because that looks like a nice glowing hydrogen, graphene based, every angstrom on that thing can absorb and emit light. Well, that's impossible. That's above our technology. Yeah, it kind of is. It is. Shortly, it's not going to be. Uh, let's put it that way. But that's what I see there. Okay, a thing that can move like that. What's it? Right there, it's sitting in neutral, right? Because it's just a photon, a big giant photon. A lot of little ones acting like a big one. And what that'll do is stay in place while the Earth spins by at 67,000 miles an hour attached to a thing, a solar system that's going however fast that is, okay? Don't confuse me with this. But it's going fast. It looks fast to you. Oh, okay, now we get a little ridiculous, okay? Now this, this part... I wish I could say it was designed to embarrass Weinstein, but I'm not that clever. This is designed to make me visualize what the hell, I mean, what it would be like at the graviton level. What is gravity really? Put it in a way that I can understand it. I'm an engineer, but I'm not a physicist, especially at this level of gravitons and stuff. But I can visualize what a spin to graviton looks like. And that's what it looks like. And then I can visualize what would it be like to be a little one plank length man 
Because when I saw that thing, I'm like, that looks like the, the fun house at, uh, you know, an amusement park. You ride in that thing and you get dizzy. So what would it be like to be a one plank length guy walking into a, walks into a graviton? Almost sounds like a joke, right? Well, first he has to push his way in a little bit. So a body in motion, he's resting. He's resting, then he pushes in there, then he's in motion, staying in motion, then he's kicked out the other side by inertia. You know, why is it still going? The ant car shut off. Well, it's inertia. Well, you know, it's in there. The three laws are in that thing, I'm telling you. Then there's the guy above him. He's feeling that pull gravity. So you get two, two effects in one. You get inertia and gravity. And as my friend from Lincoln, Nebraska noted when he saw this silly thing, he said, well, he, he didn't, no, I think he did say it exactly, uh, spell it out for me. He said, you should have put another guy below it for the push gravity, because he's a proponent of it. He, he's a fan of Rancourt, and he brings him up now and then. The push gravity, which I see both on that thing, don't you, people? See how that vortex is, is pulling down, but if you're below it, it's pushing on your head. So what does that remind you of? To me, I'm, th I'm thinking about this. I'm like, what can I compare this to for my own... Oh, that's too much. Uh, for my own assistance of myself, to me, and to everyone else. And I'm looking at that, and I'm thinking, and I forgot to get the prop this morning. And I got thousands of them. A nuts and bolts. If you're a nut hanging here in space, use my head. Yeah. Going to make a complete fool of myself here. That's fine. And a screw's coming down through my head and going through it and pushing down to the floor. It's pushing this way, a screw pushing through that nut. But it's pulling this way. So, the joke in there somewhere is about how it's all about nuts and bolts all the way down or something. But again, pushing, let me look at the screen here, pulling and pushing and doing that spin thing that causes the body to stay in motion once it gets started and then when it stops, it goes a little bit. Then it stops, okay? Then it's at rest again. Anyway, I'm sure that made zero sense to some of you. Uh, then this is even worse. This is the worst part, probably. Then we'll get right back into the hard science. And this is just a silly thing I found uh, again yesterday on purpose. This is supposed to be a photon going through gravitons, disrupting them. The big yin-yang thing which I will give myself credit for, people, if, in case people are saying, this guy's visualizations are goofy, he's, he's on mushrooms. <laughs> no. Not for many years, anything. Nothing. So, well, coffee. Excuse me. El Delicioso. Uh, so I had to visualize years ago what a photon would look like, and it looked like a, uh, to me, a... Yin yang. Okay? Now, if you go back less than a year, even, it was a big scientific breakthrough that somebody figured out and took a photo of a photon. And what did it look like? I give you the yin yang thing. And then, if you take two of them, you see, it's, it's hard to visualize 3D and 4D shown on a flat 2D. But if you take another one and smoosh it on there, you get an electron. So you get like a... I'll tell you what. You can go back and find my web pages. You will find a whole bunch of pages on what might a photon look like. And there's a whole page called Yin Yang or Yin Yang. And uh, there it is. So enough of that. But 
not to dismiss it. But if you know the light is affecting gravity, or gravitons in this case, and you figure out how that's done, then you're going to have your space travel and all that stuff. Because you're going to be, as has been shown and written and etc., we see with our own eyes, but it's tricky, especially when, when it gets counterintuitive with the heavy here and the light there. Uh, we know light affects gravity. We know that. The bifeld bronze stuff, eh, eh. Electro, eh. Magnetic, eh. Affecting gravity, no. I mean, maybe a little bit if you put in 40 jillion gigawatts and you get a little bit of ionic wind or something, a thing sparks and shoots off the table. Yeah, you know. Which, by the way, that thing is a lot that and a lot of things. Okay, especially when it's got electricity in it. If you're shoot, if you're because you're creating that ion wind with all that mass or with all that. That's the second part. One, it's a light matter interaction. Explain it away that way. Ionic wind. Okay, I explained. Ionic wind. It's not electricity affecting gravity. Pardon me. Secondly, if it's asymmetrical, you're slosh, sloshing mass around. That you know, electricity, uh, you know, it's going to weigh something if you're moving electrons. Okay, unless you have a perfect superconductor, that's another thing. I didn't think of that till just now. But you're sloshing mass around. I can take a wheelbarrow, put water in it, and try to move it, and it's going to start sloshing. So when I'm going this way, it's going to feel like it's pulling and thrusting me a bit. See what I mean? It's, got, it's like that, it, it's, but it's a net zero thing, and it's going to cost you a ton of gigawatts and stuff. So, uh, Jesse, you may want to look over here at Wayne's stuff, Wayne's video. You want videos? I bet you uh, he could give you some ideas. Okay? All right, so... We trashed that, I guess, a little bit, but that's nothing personal against Byfeld Brown. That was 1928 and 1965. Optomechanics, photonics, all that stuff's way, you know, after 1965. Not way after, but, you know, they had lasers in the 60s, but compared to what we're thinking about now and can do now and all that, a mm, long time ago. So when you get caught up on history, and we know you're a history buff, and we want the whole story and all that, and it is interesting. And uh, but when you get to now, history's happening now too. Okay, you might want that. The history of now. That sounds kind of. That sounds like something I wouldn't say, but it might be. Uh, it might be relevant to something. Uh, let me ch quickly check the agenda. Did I miss anything yet? No. So we're going to move on to our next paper. By uh, this one's quick, quick summary on this one. Wait till you get a load of this. Okay, I'm not. I'm not trying to waste your time here, folks. This is why I say a viral video is uh, could be a lot closer than we think. Because we have another guy here called Libor Newman. From the Czech Republic. This paper was published 24 March 17. And it is from Physics Essays and link below, etc. Blah blah. And what's he doing? I read the title, but what's he doing here? I didn't sink in. Elect experiment of verification. Okay, he's weighing light and heat. Isn't that interesting? What would that take to do that? Because if you're losing light, losing weight in the form of light and heat, as the phases do, as... I don't want to get into the whole rant right now, but as Kelly has said many times, but repeating other people too on pieces of it, but putting it together. Um, if you can do that, then you're a step ahead of 
knowing what you're doing. And if you look at Wayne's video page, you will see where he does that with different uh, things. Water, uh, gases. You know, it basically lets things cool or heats them up and sees the difference. And we are talking about mass reduction. And, you know, and, and that's going to affect gravity. Okay, all it is is showing in a very rudimentary form, but it shows the principle so clearly that all you need to do, you don't need a big mathematic brain like Weinstein. You can use arithmetic and just add up the numbers to optimize what could be done with it. You carry it to the extreme, in other words. But that's been on many other videos. We're not getting into that. Uh, let me read uh, read from his paper a little bit, what I've highlighted here. The measurement apparatus is a modification of the well-known Cavendish experiment. So he's in the same ballpark. Uh, referred to as weighing the Earth. The test masses, fixed large balls, were replaced with chambers containing electromagnetic radiation sources. Light. As soon as I saw that first paper, I'm like, what he's got to do is put light on it. Then I read the second paper. It's like, okay, he did it. This one I didn't remember as well as Rancourt, but I do think I've seen it because it's, how would I miss this? But I, I apparently did miss the big number I'm going to give you in a moment. All right, so he's doing the same thing. Instead of weights, shining lights on weights, he's putting the weights on the pendulum, showing the same thing. Well, how much did it show? Was there heat involved? Was there error bars? Uh, yeah, he accounted for that stuff, okay? That's where the ADX comes in. That comes from him. And he's, you know, again, showing that, yeah, there's going to be some heat from the moving air, but unlike the Bifeld Browns and the Grava Flyers, and that might be the wrong word for it, but some of these things where you're running a lot of electricity through a thing and it's reacting in the air, a lot of this UFO history, a lot of the stories, a lot of that stuff comes down to that. When you're ionizing things, their energy profile, their energy levels are going to change, which is like what I'm talking about. So, yes, I see it everywhere I go. Not everywhere, not everything. Like a Casimir, if that exists, I don't think that would fall under that. That would be something unique. And if you could find all this superpower to bust through the plank lengths of the very fabric of space-time can find that power, that's different too. But getting back here to what we can do, and what is on this paper, what is showing you on the videos, which with the slightest bit of imagination, that's me, you jack it up, you blow it up, you take it and use it, and where does it lead to? So he says to, in the end, in the conclusion section, my favorite section, and another well-written paper, the other one was too. Most of these are garbly gush, gup, garbage. He says, and I think I'm going to read this entire paragraph. It's short, like two sentences. Yeah. Comparing the measured electromagnetic gravity constant with the Newton gravity constant, compare, it gives us the following, okay, Bob. Interaction of one, listen up, one watt, one watt, what's that, a Christmas light? I don't know. Of electromagnetic radiation with the test mass body is nearly equal to the gravity interaction of 15 kilograms of mass. What? Drop, drop something, you know. What? He might have said Yahtzee, I don't know. Um, 15 kilograms of mass, that's 33 pounds to, you know, normal people. It is a significantly stronger interaction than Newton's gravity effect when considering the effect of 
Mass of emitted photons is about 10 to 14 grams times greater than the effective mass of photons emitted during the experiment. Uh, you know, that last part, I gotta reread that slowly in peace and quiet to drink that in because the headline here is it's talking about one watt and 15 kilograms or 33 pounds. That's why those things are turning on the pendulum significantly. That's the kind of stuff you want to film in real time now. You don't I wouldn't put out a challenge on a thing that never works for 50 years. But if you believe in it, believe in it. Go on, somebody might do it. I could be wrong. I sound pretty confident right now. But, uh, you know, I leave room for error. <laughs> I hope the microphone's turned on. Let's see. Uh, did I miss anything else here? Oh, boy, am I glad I looked back. Because here's the key to this this thing, this problem we all have, from the big shots, a million followers, and a million views, to us down here in the trenches, including Libor Newman, laboring away, finding this remarkable result. He asks, how can we explain the subject of the paper in a more popular way. <sighs> That's why we need the viral video, folks. All right. You want a flying car? You got to work for it. And you got to dig around and try to find it. It's not going to come to you on a silver platter. All right, enough of that stuff. <clears throat> that little scold. Let's check the agenda here, see how we're doing. We moved through that. So what are we on next? Um, I don't know if you know. Okay, that, I, don't, I don't know why that's there. Let's go back to the agenda, which is a bit more reliable than my Twitter accounting. So now we're going to move on down to tabs. Okay, we went up there. That's why. That was a repeat. So we went through that. We went through that. We went through the paper. Now we're shifting gears a little bit. Uh, one could, or, I'll note to myself, yes, one could argue it looks like gravity generation. It looks like anti-gravity, like traditionally we think of it, but it also looks like gravity generation. I'll repeat it again. Down here, it makes you heavy. Here's a thing of light coming under my head. Oh. Up here, it makes me light. Anti-gravity. Down here, it looks like gravity generation. Up here, it looks like an anti-gravity particle, which doesn't exist, or an anti-gravity wave or something like that. That's what it looks like. This is 2024, so, you know, maybe in the future you got a better uh, way to put it. But that's what it looks like, the light-matter interaction. That's the winner. Oops. Put my notes in the coffee. That's good. All right. So, Lazar fans. Okay, no, we keep going. Uh, that's a... Why is that there? Oh, okay. This is a quick note. Putting everyone on notice. Now, this conference was months and months ago. Kev, Dr. Kevin Knuth put on a great speech about where does the energy, among other things, where does the energy come from? You are on notice, all of you, infotainment guys that are halfway between. He isn't. He should be. He's free. I don't think he has any NDAs or anything like that. That answer about where does all the energy come from, that's been out there now, and it's going to be been out there. And uh, you're on notice. It's your responsibility to look around and find out what the theories are. All right. Now, we, uh, we appreciate the soul. S-O-L, not soul. Different thing. All right. And we, and we appreciate and understand, really do, 
that you can't say everything you know because some of you are in NDAs and you have federal funding and you have all that stuff. I understand that. It's easy for me to shoot my mouth off because I'm retired, no one cares, got no reputation, etc. I'm not classified. I'm, I'm like the sky. I'm not classified. So, I can, it's easy for me to intimate that if somebody didn't see something float with their own eyes, did I mention I was a lawyer in my previous life and an attorney? So I see, you know, what can we testify to? Whatever. What's information but not a lie, but a little slight omission? You know, everyone does it. Maybe you saw it on tape. That's fine. We know what you saw. Oh, so we want to help you. We want to help you. We want to help the shaved ape. We want to help you primates evolve. And I don't mean that in a word like a, a stupid theory that doesn't exist. We mean it like it means really supposed to mean. Grow in time. If you have, or someone you know, has a chunk of a thing. Pretend my head is a terahertz wave guy that fell off a flipping thing. And you're shooting terahertz waves at it. In the, uh, you know, Bigelow's thing or in the Army's thing, whatever you did. I thank you for your service doing that stuff. And you're doing that and something happens. Next thing you know, you're going to shine a light under it. It's going to get heavy and fall. Hmm. Now you're controlling gravity. Now you're moving. You shine a light above it in the right conditions, okay? You're the scientist. You can read this stuff. It'll pull it up. Test it that way. I'd be curious because it's going to happen anyway, sooner or later. So, and then, and then visualize and conceptualize. Then instead of shooting light over and under, your head is taking that terahertz absorbed from the ambient, we'll say you're in space, and it's spinning it around. It's vectoring itself. Okay, it's an intelligent material designed by humans, or designed by somebody, that's going to pull it in this way and push it out this way. Now you have a thing spinning around you. Now you're in control. You shape that thing. You want to go over there? You go push the light back here, or whatever it is. Ahead, behind. Up is down. Down is up. Whatever. It's going to take some work to figure that all out, so it's, it's certainly not uh, quite uh, intuitive in every way yet, is it? No, it isn't. Uh, so this is me uh, saying, oh yeah, you're on notice, yeah. Go, go look at this stuff, some of you. Because uh, we know you can't spill all the beans now. Even if you thought Kelly was right, you can't come out and say it. But I don't know what to do there. Somebody's in the middle. Somebody is close enough but they're not tied in to the NDAs and the oath, oaths. Oh. They can get away with it. And it's got to be somebody, well, the bigger the better is good. That's all I can say. It doesn't matter. We're going to do it anyway, with or without you. But I'd hate to be the one that was seen later. Oh, this would be sad. Unless you have CIA breathing on you or something. To be asked, so, Grandpa, Grandma, so you knew about this free energy capability and all this stuff, but, and you weren't bound by anything, but you decided to continue with the scaremongering on the climate change BS. Is that what you did? Is that your testimony, Grandma? <sighs> How unhinged was that? <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm going to take a sip. But, I don't know. It might be right. I have to take the chance that it is right. It's raining anyway today, so... That's alright. Tomorrow it'll be forgotten. So, are we, we done? No. So, Weinstein, we're on to you for some reason. Oh, here you are telling people, helping, you are helping, you know. 
I did a whole video on that uh, dimensional stuff. We thank you. But also you've been talking about other stuff lately about, you know, the direction of science and all, you know, a lot of different things. Um, my advice to you, well, yeah, it's important to have the big picture. Well, you know, yeah, okay, you have your view of science going off the rails. Now here's one from the sticks, Hicks in the sticks. Uh, you're not even looking at the science you already know for how a thing can move so fast and go interstellar and do all that. When I say you know, I'm talking to science as a whole. Now, everybody can't keep up with photonics. That's, you know, that's a small little thing compared to manifolds and fiber bundles of the entire universe and other possible known understood that but you're out here putting out advice about uh you know i am perhaps overly brutal when people talk about things endlessly and here's a laundry list and some of them i agree with they deserve brutality but that's i'm just an opinion too but there's an undistributed middle there of stuff that is science that is nuts and bolts that's not looked at or talked about, or thought about, or whatever. So, that's all I'm trying to do, I guess. Um, now, uh, yeah, okay, we go back. See, you were super right about the super duper secret squirrel club. That got off the hook. We have that, we have scientific stuff like Bifel Brown, which is going, no, you know, has gone nowhere that we know of but there is an undistributed middle and I'm saying that this theory is in there and like I've said before repeatedly it's idiot proof it's bulletproof etc and so forth I don't want to beat it to death it's there you are on notice too because, you know, you start getting in here. Yeah, okay. And I can see why, maybe from your angle. You... Here's a guy quoting, this is good stuff. He's quoting Weinstein back to him. Quote, you cannot metamaterial way, your way around the cosmos. Yeah, you have to have a principle behind it. As has been laid out for you. Spoon fed to you. But you have to go look for it. I don't know you in person. You got to make a, maybe a little more effort. Maybe. I mean, you make some, though. And you probably make more than anybody else. But hang in there, pal. Something might come along. You, you might, might catch your eye. Because I answer him and say, quote, quoting me now, in a post formerly known as tweets, you cannot equation your way around the cosmos either. Because we've had enough of these equations well, all you have to do is find a thing that changes the speed of light. Yeah, okay. Yeah, sure. Thank you for your help. And fiber bundles and manifolds, you know. Yeah, you may be, I think, one, 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 one YouTube, I may be the only one that knows how they got here. True, you might be. But it might not be that way either. It might be some dumb way like matter materials. But you have to have a purpose for the matter materials. I understand that. You know, I think. You cannot equation your way around the cosmos either. Both or either of those approaches have to be rooted in the achievable pounds table. Equations for the umpteenth dimension are of no more use than purposeless matter materials unless fashioned for some, wait for it, feasible principle. Now, I just yelled into the mic here for I don't know how long about feasible principles. Those are breadcrumbs you should follow. You, whoever you are. Not just the people I've named here. There's probably other people out there. And, oh uh, yeah, while we're, while we're beating on Weinstein, 
he's a mathematician. We could use some help from mathematicians because I've seen a lot of things that mathematicians aren't looking at or maybe should a little more if they're going to be anywhere near this stuff. Um, uh, mathematicians. I was beating on mathematicians in general. This is a quote from my speech rant about math. And I will say it with Weinstein in mind and what we've said so far to date with these signs, or today, shown with these papers and that video, quote, quoting me. That said, I will go on to suggest that equations around supercapitating bubbles and fluids within variable gravitational fields might be one way to describe this. Okay, that's fluidics. SCU's kind of working on that. That's good. Keep it up. I put that in the comments. I put that on your tweets. I like it. Keep it up. I join, but I don't want to make you look bad. And I don't want to use your use fake imprimatur like that other guy did. And what happened there? Okay. Quoting myself, continuing. But right now, there's not even a consensus on photon mass for thrust, despite photons being the drivers of most of it. Or barely even the notion. Okay. Okay, that stop there. This is there's no, you know, science, you know, well, they don't, I can't say it any clearer. There's, you don't even have a photon mass for thrust, and you're calling us tinfoil hats, okay? <clears throat> Despite photons being the drivers of most of the thrust, and a, and a big part of our world and our universe. Now, here's the part that's relevant to today, quoting myself in the middle of a sentence, or barely even the notion of fields of light in air or water where the force of gravity within is diminished that I have ever seen. Now, and by that I mean nailed down with equations. You can take that, those findings of Rancourt, lighter above, heavier below, you can start with that number from Libor Newman, and you can mix and match equations with it instead of doing equations about. I mean, just just I. This is probably too dumb, too easy for you, which it probably is, because even I can roughly visualize how it's done. And I'm a bachelor of science in engineering, fifty years ago or whenever, forty-five years ago or something. I don't work with it daily. I use a calculator, you know. <sighs> enough, enough. All right, we could use some math on that. And what is it? How, how does the, what happens in, the, in a field of light in air or water? Simple question, because a thing like that which has only been addressed by a couple of scientists in a couple of papers, but is, is hanging us up here along with diversions on possibly making progress on a big, a thing that could be huge. All right, we end that chapter. We get on to the, to the end, kind of. Switch gears, enough preaching. Now I'm going to get into something, and it's just, I just got to get all off my chest and say it. It's, it's a half-baked, half-baked based on what I've been saying here. Uh, everyone, or a lot of you, especially you earlier watchers, are familiar with the Malaysia Airlines Flight 370 video theory. You can call it a conspiracy theory, mystery, whatever you want to call it. Everyone has a... A lot of people have strong opinions on it. Excuse me, I'm going to take a sip. And that's the thing. You know what it is or it isn't. You don't. This airliner disappeared. This mysterious video footage appeared, supposedly, strong argument, four days later. How could this even be? And there's a bunch of other circumstances. Ashton Forbes has laid out his arguments well. 
whether they're right or not, you know, they're based on arguments, based on facts, some facts that might be right or wrong. And that's very, you know, fluctuated wildly. But as far as I'm personally concerned, that hasn't been debunked. Hasn't been proven, but it hasn't been debunked. So I don't know what to tell you about that. That's your call. But what that does is make me think, since I'm obviously thinking about this stuff, what the hell could have happened here from my angle? I mean, other people have theories. Uh, what's my theory? I might have one. Because apparently these, these are orbs uh, acting uh, in a strange propulsion, sort of like what I'm always talking about. Uh, Anti-gravity in air quotes, whatever, whatever you want to call it. Are they aliens? I don't know. Are they us? I don't know. Are they stolen stuff from the aliens? Are they, you know, I don't know. But physically, how would it work? I'd like to know. Because it's kind of roughly in my little, uh, well, it's in my, I'm interested in it. So, and when I see these UFO reports, I'll repeat it. I've never seen one. I believe some people have, you know, and uh, you know the whole story. I've given it elsewhere. And, uh, well, you see these lights coming together and coming apart in these UFOs, okay? As far as I'm concerned, that's just like a flock of geese flying together in their own slipstream. Or I think it's called a peloton. It's like when a rollerblader, that would be me, I hope I can get out there this year again if my uh, leg heals. Oh, what's that called? The hamstring. Yeah, hmm. I think it'll be okay. Anyway, I'm following a bicycle. Who's following a car? Down a hill. Okay, we pick up that slipstream. When these things, if they're in their own little light bubbles, cozy little light bubbles as I like to call them, and they come together, why well, they can just share. They share the light bubbles. It eases the wear and tear on the silly meta material. <laughs> anyway, but I've always thought, like, well, what's a uh, secondary concern is, well, what's it doing to the field around it? Okay, that gets lost in trying to get the point across of what they're they're doing in the internet in and of themselves. So, what are they doing to the the field around them? Well, if they're causing things in the field, like that experiment showed. Heavier here, lighter here, then if a thing in a, if these orbs decide to throw out a lot of light, way out, way more than they need, into the air, and they're making a big bubble there, which would be like a void, right? Air here, light in there. Why? Because those orbs put it in there. They sucked it in from the air, wrapped it around in a nice little string, with a bow on it. And I guess the fourth one comes in and ties the bow. Let's take the cheese. Poof. Cold light. Okay, it just looks all... It looks pretty familiar to me. Let's put it that way. So, before we wind down... Oh, we look at the thing. So, for laughs... Because I'm trying to visualize this. As you can see, I have a little thing for that. Making photons, making gravitons, making little clowns. When necessary to get the point across. So, to try to put it in my head what that would look like. I, what I ended up seeing, and it's not going to be done justice here. Because I only did this yesterday. You get a Venn diagram of spheres. Big bubbles. Right in the middle. What's in the middle? Can you tell me, folks, anybody? That thing. Whatever it is they want to move. I'm not saying that's what it is. I don't know. But could it be done physically in this world? Do those papers tell us that it might be able to be done with one watts equals 33 pounds? Heavier if below, lighter if above. What if we swirl it around and we make three or four big bubbles, and in the Venn diagram of a bubble, I don't know what you call that. I bet Weinstein does, though. In there, boy, it's 
it's controlled there, huh? They're working together on that. And they wrap it up. Now, what's that going to look like? I ask myself. And in case you think I'm silly, hold on. Let's make, oh, here we have, let's make a happy little orb there and fill it in. And here we have another happy orb, another one there, fill it in a little bit, sloppy. And a third happy little orb. Then what do we do? We put a little trail on it, a little cold light trail, which was dark blue in the, in the video. But we're not that accurate around here. So, uh, and we put another one there. It's pulling in from that. It's pulling in cold air from that side. It's pushing it out that side. Well, where does it go? It kind of mixes into the ambient temperature so you can't see it. Yeah, that's a little, I mean, this is getting even beyond where, I'm, where I go. Well, how can't you see it? Because you can't see it. Because it's, the temperature of the thing is not, of the camera, is not attuned to look for normal things that you can't see, except for a little heat or whatever it is, whatever it's set on. So it'll see that cold light, but when that cold light disperses among the air, that's what it is. It's dispersing. So you can't really notice it until they come in and take the cheese. I get, I, you know, this is just my imagination. Do with it whatever you want. So there's our third happy little orb, pulling and pushing cold light. And they're going in a pattern. Look, ooh, patterns. They're wrapping around the thing in a sinusoidal pattern. Hmm. Looks like a, what do you call that? A Venn diagram forming up there, sir, in uh, 2D or whatever it is. And in, inside those little circles are dispersed bits of cold light. And, you know, and then the fourth one comes along and takes the cheese. It's just a thought. And what might that look like this? Look, I don't know. Weaving and weaving. Weaving around. Till the fourth one comes in. You can't see it on here, but... I don't know. It looks like this GIF went dead. Computer was having issues earlier. There we go. Whoops. That's the Fugazi that failed, I think. Yeah. So I think that's just about it. Oh my gosh. What? Can we be done already? It's having so much fun. Oh yeah, well, we got to sign out. we got to have our closing benediction. The first, I'm going to reread the summary, which I think I did. History is important, but we got to get up to speed. That means you, 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 and you. Consider, uh, well, that's too, uh, I want to tell people what to do. Getting into the history of now, I don't know if I like that, but history could be happening right now. And uh, along these lines. Uh, similarly, theories of everything are important, but so is understanding the mundane in the here and now. That's a good point. That's what I was stumped, should have said before when I was stumbling. Theories of everything is, are important, but so is understanding the mundane here and now. And by mundane, I mean these experiments because they're light bulbs and weights on a pendulum. They're not, people want to see things flying. They want a viral video. Well, I think they're going to get it, but you got to build up to it. And you do that with the mundane. You know what else is mundane? The trillion ton clouds of water above your head. Things like that. It all came down the day in the rain. Why? Because the energy levels changed. Why? Because of the light pumping in throughout and around. Went away, it got cold, the water condensed, went from anti-gravity to wet inertia. I mean, wet on the ground. It's a liquid, so it's not as affected by inertia as is a solid. Maybe it'll freeze up next week. I don't know. It's getting, getting into March. I don't know. 
and uh, we could see our three phases in real time. Anyway, it all comes down to, please don't overlook the mundane in the here and now. I think that's about it. I think we can ha have our benediction. From my uh, contacts and so on, uh, I, I think although there will be enough information coming out to finally lay to rest that this is not a tinfoil hat subject and there's a reality to it and uh, <clears throat> the government is making a concerted effort to to uh, learn more about it um, <clears throat> i think any truly deep state increase knowledge is likely not to come out. I don't see all the barriers falling. Understand. From my well, so that tells me if you want flying cars, you're gonna have to do it the hard way from the ground up because you'll be waiting forever for these guys. And uh, you know that's their duty, so we have to live with it. All right, I think that is everything. Let me get oriented here. I'll say goodbye now. I'll go back to Tiny. I'll pause and then have an outro. Thank you. Well, it looks like we're at the same time as yesterday. So it should be just like yesterday, which was fine. Under two hours. That's good. This is a little faster. But yesterday was practice, so now we're <laughs> perfect. Yeah. All right, thank you very much for visiting. Please like, share, subscribe, comment below. If you have a comment, uh, Twitter is a good place to find me, formerly known as X. I got that backwards. Remember, light below, heavy. Light above, lighter. Yeah. Weird, isn't it? All right, so, but that's the reality we face, and that's what we're working with. I think that's something worth exploring. Don't you? All right, so we're going to pause and uh, do an outro. Thank you. Control, pause.